Indian MP visiting Australia compares Muslim conquest of India to the big H. So this story contains a lot of words that YouTube really hates, particularly referring to the massive tragedy that was inflicted upon the Jewish people during World War II. I think we all know what we talk, what I'm talking about. Hey, I call wait it a second. H. It's not just the Jewish people. Okay, this is LG. This is Pride okay, Month. Yeah. Okay, so yes. it was also it was it was six million Jewish people, but there was also a whole bunch of other people like. Gay, um, LGBT members and also handicapped people and also Romanis um, mm -hmm. and also wait hand, did I say handicapped people yeah yes um, and political people that politically descended okay so we see like we have to remind people that the big H was not about just the Jews but also a lot of Jews but other people as well okay but go ahead. see anyway I'm, I'm a so good I'm never mind go on I was going <laughs> <laughs> so yeah when i say the big h if you don't know what yeah. word i'm talking about it's on the screen okay but i have to use it because youtube really hates when i use the actual word okay so um in may of 2022 tejaswi surya a uh, member of parliament representing the hindu nationalist bjp party of india attended the australia india youth dialogue or a i y d he told an audience in Paramata, man, Australians have weird names for things. Paramata, that the history of Islam and a stop being racist to Australians, please. Thank you very much. We're good. He told an audience in Paramata that the history of, of of Islam and a particular community is quote writ large with bloodshed and violence. He also said quote the Islamic chapter in India is the bloodiest chapter in the history of the world. He asked the audience if they had Jewish friends and spoke of the availability of films portraying the horrors of the big H, but none depicting the Islamic conquest of India. His appearances were met with protests from Australian Muslim groups. Junaid Ahmed, a student in the University of New South Wales and a representative of a coalition of Muslim student associations, told The Guardian that giving a platform to Surya normalizes his views. Quote, such hate speech promotes Islamophobia and facilitates violent extremism. Discrimination and hate speech should not be accepted at our universities or in our wider Australian societies, um, Ahmed stated. Nevertheless, the Australia-India Youth Dialogue responded to media requests for comment by stating that they are a, quote, staunchly apolitical organization. Wait, this is the tweet by S, uh, S. J. Wereleman. This guy is a nut job. I don't know if this is a good representative. Okay, but no, is C. J. Wereleman like? I disagree with a lot of what he says, but this was just a very good. It was a good clip of what this MP said, so we can watch actually what he said. Um, it's kind of okay. long, so we won't watch the whole thing, but let let's watch the first two minutes. In all of your minds. We have seen the history of this particular, uh, you know, community from the time of its existence. And its history has been writ large with bloodshed and violence. I think uh, there are two things that as a community we must do. This will also kind of touch the a question on Tipu Sultan and others. How many of you have Jewish friends here? Almost all of us do, right? We have interacted with some Jew at some point in time. You will know that uh, if you just go on Netflix, right? I'm sure all of you have Netflix accounts. Ashita, do you have one? You can at least find 10 movies based on or telling the story of the Jewish Holocaust. How many stories do we have that we have put on Netflix or on such streaming platforms? which tell the world 
the gory story of the Islamic invasion of India. Zero. That was basically like all I wanted to show. Zero. He kind of goes on uh, and he talks like so slowly. Yeah, but okay, so but he's not encouraging violence though, is he? Like look at the tweet. He says like he didn't directly encourage like so the CJ guy, he says on Australian soil encouraging violence against Muslims. Does it does it continue? I, I don't want if it does encourage violence, I don't want to play it because we might get in trouble. But does he go okay, so and CJ goes on to say that he's equating Indian Muslims with Yahtzees again, where you need he to didn't do that. Words. Did he do that? He didn't do I mean, that. He didn't how many? Do that. I mean, technically, he's right about like I don't know if this guy is a nut job or not. I mean, he is. He's BJP. Okay, so he's not a nut job by default. But yeah, yeah, at yeah. this point, at this point, he's not uh, wrong. Like, how many Muslims? How many Hindus died uh, with the Muslim invasion? How many? Millions and millions and millions. Yeah, Millions. I mean, so, so how is that not comparable? It is comparable. That's one thing that I My... thought was kind of interesting about this news story. Like, that is something to consider. It's like the death toll is enormous. Like, unfathomable. Unfathomable. But what is the issue with what he's saying is he starts off by saying the history of this particular community from its Oh, inception. yeah, yeah, that's a problem. Good, good, yeah, that's a good, huge good, problem. Good. That's a good huge catch, problem. Good catch. Okay, so the pro okay, yes. Very good, very good, very good, Susanna. So the problem is not that this event didn't happen. The event did happen, and maybe it deserves a lot more attention, okay, because it was like a massacre, okay, in history. Bigger than the Big Edge. It was a massacre. I, I Maybe I'll, I'll look it up. I don't know how many people died. But I, I thought it was bigger than the Big Edge, okay? Um, what he's doing wrong is that he's equating Muslims today, living today, with what happened with, with some other people that, that lived a long time ago that have nothing to do with the people that are today. You know what I mean? It's, it's guilt, guys, it's guilt by association. It's a exactly. form of collective mindset, collective punishment, and holding people of the community collectively responsible for crimes that they have not committed, okay? So that is the problem with what he's saying. Right, good, good call. Oh, yeah, Bengali Hindu is saying 80 million Hindus di uh, died is a bit exaggerated. Okay, so some people are saying 80, 80 million. Some people are saying it's exaggerated. I mean, there were mountains literally named after the fact that Hindus died, okay? Like Hindu Hindu Kush means, Kush means killing, and Hindu is Hindu, okay? And that's the Hindu Kush mountains. So how many people, so some people know it isn't. Okay, I'm gonna have to look up the data because I can't trust you guys. I tried Hindus? I tried to look this up before the show, but all I found was like really uncredible sources that had a very obvious agenda. So I really didn't know what to go with. A lot of people quote eight million, but there's also historians that have major issues with that. And what's interesting is um, you know, like this conquest and talking about like if should it be considered genocide and all these things is a really interesting conversation because it happened in a vastly different way than the big h which is one of history's first attempts at like a secret genocide um whereas what happened with the islamic quest conquest of india i mean this happened over years and years and years and years right so it wasn't um as condensed so there's there's a lot of things that are very dissimilar about the two events. It doesn't mean that they're not it's not something that shouldn't be talked about. I think one thing that's really interesting is all of the rhetoric that was coming out of the people that were protesting him. Like just talking about it promoting Islamophobia and I think there I don't know. I have. I. I don't know how much of this was like edit, edited out by the people who actually published the stories. But I just wish these criticisms of him were more pointed in exactly what we're saying. Like, this is how you are taking what happened centuries ago and blaming it on Indian Muslims now and using that to make them guilty to justify policies against their well-being, and you're promoting that internationally. You know, instead of saying like. 
I don't necessarily, I don't have a problem with people making movies about this kind of thing. In the end, however, okay, no, I, here's the problem though. At the end of his speech, the part that he didn't say, he said, oh, the Kashmir Files was like a good attempt at doing this. So for those who don't know, the Kashmir Files is a movie that came out recently that caused widespread incitement of violence against Muslims across the Indian country. And um, it has it's chock full of historical inaccuracies in talking about the expulsion of Hindus from Kashmir. Um, and so he's like, Oh yeah, it was a good attempt at kind of showing the story. And basically like he wants to showcase and propagandize. I mean, it's, it's actually is an okay thing to talk about Hindus being persecuted like by Islam. Like I I'm totally fine with that, but like he's clearly propagandizing it. And the fact that he holds up a cash, the Kashmir files as an example, I was like, Oh dude, you're telling me everything I need to know. <laughs> like, Okay. Um, oxymoron is saying, so Hindus should not have claimed, um, should not have a claim to victimhood as a whole, only if they are, um, uh, Wait, I think only. I think you mean that if we're if we don't want to be collective, so you can't say every shudra is a victim. Yeah, I agree with that. That's why, for example, as like I like a lot of I criticize a lot of ex-Muslims who haven't uh, been oppressed. Like we know, like ex-Muslims are a target. Okay, we know ex-Muslims. Okay, are being targeted for oppression and for discrimination and to be threatened. Okay, and their lives could be at risk. That doesn't mean that every ex-Muslim is a victim. You can't just say like because i'm an ex-muslim therefore i'm a victim right so for example i'm an ex-muslim i'm fine okay i'm not being oppressed by anybody okay just but, but we can't say this community is being targeted and that deserves attention but that doesn't make automatically every single of that of that community a victim so i agree with that you have to look at it that would mean many shudras have become victim because the fact that the community is being targeted um so that's yeah, how well, you look i mean at like it. no one made that claim i don't know what you're responding to um yeah wait there was another good comment um forever stormy is saying the problem isn't that they're talking about history the problem is that they are blaming people existing today for what happened centuries back and right. uh bubble oh, sorry oh, wait. bubble is yeah. saying uh oh, man these names are so hard for me i'm sorry guys the Jasvi surya also got into trouble with the princess of dubai for making fun of fgm victims in the middle east wow you would think that as someone who obviously opposes Islam as much as he does, like he would have sympathy for women who'd gone through that experience. But okay, what a piece of work. Um, Bubble is also saying millions over the course of a few centuries is horrible, but perhaps fairly common at the time for nations. Using it as a victim card today is quite stupid. Correct me if I'm wrong. It wasn't common. Okay, like, yeah, uh, wars and invasions were common, but not this not to this level okay this was uh uniquely um crazy you know what i mean like there are certain like even though wars were more common back then there are certain events in history that like go like are uniquely um bloody evil okay like for example Chinggis khan's invasion like was not common okay that level of massacre this one also the like there's actually very few examples where in history where things get this bad the level of uh, bloodshed gets get to this level of when uh, when the arabs invaded india okay or the muslims invaded india okay um but also when it comes to using it as a victim card today is quite stupid that part i agree with okay because you weren't there you weren't being slaughtered okay as nothing it's kind of like iranians today who claim like, oh my God, our ancestors were like killed mm. by the Arabs. They're like, okay, well, you, you did it, you weren't killed, okay? So shut up, like you're not the victim, okay? So it has nothing to do with you personally. But so the second part I different, agree with. Whereas like, there are people who are like, that I'm friends with, that they're like, yeah, my parents survived the big age. Yeah. It's very different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could still complain if it goes in like, of up to 10 generations okay because there's a multi-generational poverty that you're feeling it well not 10 generations maybe like four okay then after four maybe stop complaining it, it. <laughs> we need to have a serious discussion about when you yeah you like at, at one <laughs> at what point can you you have to stop complaining how many generations of victimhood do we accept 
Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, so yeah, also uh, PK is also confirming. Basically, he's trying to say we blame today's Muslims for the past. Exactly, that's the point. Yeah, it also ties into how much Hindu for rhetoric goes into blaming. People are going to massacre me for the way I'm about to pronounce this name. The most hated Muslim ruler of India, Aurangzeb, um, and how they're constantly, constantly talking about Aurangzeb and like rectifying india from this damage that orangs on did like it was centuries ago and constantly bringing this up as this spot of grievance it's like how was the nation supposed to move forward you india is is not just like america is a nation like india is a nation but it's a civilization it has a civilizational identity and so you can't keep carrying like this backpack full of these ghosts like it happened it was part of the time i don't know the, the like the the very politicized use of these historical figures and happenings is very interesting and troubling to me especially just how it's used to basically just inflict punishment on people today mm. yep i mean and this is not uniquely indian people are doing that everywhere mm. okay people are blaming people uh, for their past, for the the crimes of it's hey hey, dear Hindus, okay, stop thinking in an Abrahamic mindset, okay. This is you thinking in an Abrahamic mindset. This is the crimes of the father is the crime of the son. This is a biblical narrative. Maybe get out of your box and think things more with more nuance, okay. This is you being an in an abrahamic box okay there we go oh wait just uh, for what it's worth in in case this is correct sahana is saying this man has a gutter mouth but he wasn't making fun of fgm victims he was making fun of the muslim men who committed okay i'm not sure which is true but i just thought i would throw that in there before we close the segment in case we got that wrong so cool. <laughs> saying, <"Damn." laughs> okay cool atheist republic needs your help we have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.